Welcome back, everyone. The Cube's live coverage here in Denver for Booney World. I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube. Savannah Peterson is with me. She's not here today. She had to get back to the ranch. Doug Hedgins is here. He's the principal analyst at Constellation Research. Doug, Cube alumni, great to see you. Always great to have you on the Cube, uh, contributing to the to the audience and the community. Great to have you back. Great to see you. So, I say not a lot of analysts here. Surprisingly, you asked me if there's a lot of analysts. There, there are there are analysts, but not like a lot. I think next year, after what we saw here in the keynote, there should be more because from my conversations, October. this management team is locked in on growth. They got great customers. They got a new management team, Steve Lucas at the helm, energetic, visionary, knows his product, not afraid to make moves, two M&A deals out of the gate. Vishal Sikha is doing a deal, an OEM deal, deal with Stripe, I mean. Doug, what's your assessment? What's your analysis? Yeah, he's definitely um, you know? raising the profile of Boomi. Uh, they already had, you know, 20,000 plus customers, more than 20, I think it's 25 years in the industry, kind of pioneered the iPad space. Um, but they're kind of a quiet company uh, until yeah. Steve uh, really is upping the game. And I thought yesterday's keynote was really visionary and, and <laughs> kind of bold <laughs> to be saying they might be orchestrating things that you, know, you might see from CRM or from, you know, uh, from marketing automation or firing up dashboards. Sure. You talk to the product people, they're like, no, no, we're, we're focused on integration and automation. <laughs> Settle down, But he's, he's got some bigger yeah. ambitions. He's talking a big game. Yeah. Steve is talking a big game. Yeah. And, and, but you got to have that game because I think Boomi, I mean, I've been saying this for years and, and I, pass, I still don't understand what iPass is. I mean, I've been, like, it's integrated, it's been, it's an older definition, but the fundamentals of what it is, is basically, I, I used to call it the cleanup crew. You know, go uh. clean up the legacy stuff. There's a lot of sausages being made, guts on the floor, IT screwed up, go fix it, integrate the big systems, a lot of legacy, a lot of hard problems. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool, but that's modernization. So now, iPass, conceptually, is connecting apps to <laughs> Infrastructure. Well, that, that's part of the confusion of iPads because it was al always an aspirational category. It really <laughs> didn't. You had a group of people in iPads that came from the application integration space. You had a group of players that came in from the data integration space. And they didn't really, you know, the premise of iPads was we cover it all, but they didn't. And what they've been doing in recent years is scrambling to do more of what they didn't do. So, you know, you see... Boomi here talking more about data management uh, and, and focus on data where it's yeah. coming out of the app integration space. You the saw, API, their, their moves on the AMA. Yeah, well, API. all of them are stepping up on API management and that's where you hear the tagline, you know, the AI economy is the API economy. That's yeah. why that's really important. So everybody in the space, iPaaS space, is stepping up on API management. But you also see the folks with the app Focus stepping up. You saw a rumor last week since disavowed that, you know, like Salesforce, a la MuleSoft, would looking at acquiring an, uh, Informatica, stepping up on the the data space. Um, so and the data data players stepping up on API management. Well, that rumor about Informatica and Salesforce that kind of went away. Yes, it did. someone walked away. It did, but that that would be the sense. Yeah, you know, yeah, they yeah. have MuleSoft, but they didn't have the data integration stuff as richly as one would yeah, say. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to dig into who left who at the table ah. there. Or was there even a table? Yeah. Because, uh, you know, sometimes the press might want to get the clicks. Man. It'll try a balloon. I, I want to get your thoughts on something, because you just you brought up an interesting point about iPads, and, and we are just riffing on the categories. In all these major inflection points, one of my things I've observed over my career is that there's disruptive enablement, meaning something has to go away for the new to come in. That's just natural evolution. Enabling platforms do enable value proposition, but sometimes they're not disruptive, they're just, they're valuable. But in this market, there's disruption. So when you think about iPaaS, or even like categories like application programming management, um, these old areas, AI ops, these are old pre-gen AI, well-informed market categories. In your research, and your uh, view of the landscape, what's, what are the most volatile categories that might change and or reform or merge. So like, I mean, I brought up APN, maybe because it just jumped on my head, but like application performance management, every application needs performance management. Is it a category? Or is it, well, I is think I pass a category? Like you, what is it? You're going to see convergence. I think you're going to see companies that don't really fulfill every need going away because companies, 
you know, if they have an integration automation problem, they don't want to make that integration automation problem harder by bringing in multiple tools for integration automations. So that's why there's been this effort to fill in all the blanks to be the one platform that companies can standardize to serve all their needs. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people talk about connectors. I think yeah. when you get into a world of agents, that sort of connector, you know, count race is going to go away. You want smart agents that are going to be able yeah. to connect everything. So the, the, the integration automation companies that aren't sophisticated, that aren't stepping up on AI are the ones that are going to be vulnerable. Are you bullish on the agent velocity trend that's happening? Um, what yes, saying. I am. I mean, I, th I think uh, there's great potential there. I think you'll hear more in today's uh, in, in today's keynote about the potential for agents. Yesterday, Steve Lucas, kind of the CEO, kind of alluded to greater potential than just integration and automation. Uh, yesterday's announcements were very much about AI within Boomi for integration, for automation. Today, I think you're going to hear more about this potential of agents and the orchestration capabilities of Boomi to enable companies to harness AI and to have agents that could orchestrate those agents with many different skills to get work done and to take action. I had Arlen on, who's the CFO president. He's a, ran M&A at SAP. We were talking about how has a lot of SAP DNA here. Uh, he loves this business. He's not a lot of professional services, a lot of SaaS. They're in the cloud, so they, they, they play well with the hyperscalers. So check, I don't see Amazon competing with them anytime soon because uh, they're making good bank on uh, off them and with, with the cloud play there. But they're also at scale, right? So if, if Boomi can bring that next level down and get into that, that a classic enterprise platform, they have a potential to go after the holy grail, which is the data layer. I mean, yes. they they want to be Switzerland. That's their positioning. What's your what's your reaction to that? What's uh, is it too early to call that or even kind of hint at it? I mean, they're saying. Well, I think they're one of the players that one of the iPads players that could really span a lot and bring it all together and orchestrate agents. Um, you're right. I don't think the you know the public clouds have particularly good, they have kind of lower level collections of integration and automation services. They haven't really pulled them together. They're partnering to a large extent yeah. with the Informaticas, with the Boomies, yeah. you know, with Mule, Salesforce slash MuleSoft. So, you know, I think these companies with, with these independents, with a, a yeah. large uh, customer base are in a great position to, to yeah. go beyond just integration automation and, and, and play in this AI agent space. You know, it's interesting, you know, one of our main principles around our, around our super cloud narrative was that a snowflake can build on top of AWS and not have to build their own cloud, right? So Boomi's in that same luxury position where they can build on top of AWS or a cloud and get all the benefits of the CapEx and be exactly. a customer of Amazon. Hence Amazon has to figure out, well, I might, compete with a feature, but I'm not going to compete with iPass. I'm not going to compete with Boomi. Why right. would they? They don't need to. Yeah. They help each other, right? So, okay, check. It that provides a, the, the compute and the storage and the network. Okay. Uh, Boomi can do the orchestration. If I'm a p private equity or I'm an investor investing in this company, okay, they're not going to get rolled on by Amazon. Amazon likes them. Then you go, okay, what's their opportunity on premise and edge? Then you get into the, okay, the data, trusted data layer, which I find really Fascinating this news here. What's your take there? Does that have legs in your opinion? Because well, they very much got it. They can very much address on-prem. Uh, they already have, you know, some of the acquisitions they've made are to bolster their their you know with Mashery and yeah. with Apita is to uh, both solidify the on-prem capabilities, API yeah. gateways for on-prem for the cloud. Uh, yeah. Have the Apita is, is the control plane to orchestrate it all together. Um, so I think they're they're really well positioned. Interesting is that Mashery and Apita, they're both cloud-based too, but they also work on-prem. Yes. Mashery was is old school. Yes, you know, we, 2006, you I remember, think. Yeah, no, I remember no. the founders when they started that company, like, there was no, uh, API Marketplace was just emerging. Yeah. And they they, they, they have good tech. So everything, uh, you know, back when Lord. founded in 2006 was very yeah. much on-prem still, so yeah. Yeah. I definitely have the credit. I mean, the Digirati or the Cloudarati, as we call them back then, was a small group of people at that time. Cloud was just emerging, early days. So now we fast forward, APIs are running 80% of the traffic through APIs, um, and so APIs are a data connector. 
Uh, we saw the relationship with Stripe here earlier with Matt and uh, Body from Stripe. Um, great example of an integration play where, I mean, to me, integration and iPads is that a, that's, that's just the industry. I mean, everyone's integrating. It's not like there's no monoliths anymore. Yeah. So. Well, I think the area where Boomi is stepping up is on the data side. You know, you saw yesterday a little bit more scale and depth and uh, just the basics of ETL, ELT, talking about, uh, you know, uh, data movement at scale that's very much in demand yeah. for AI needs. Um, change data capture, some things they're talking about yeah. bringing to the fore. So they're really becoming that well-rounded integration player. What do you think about their OEM strategy? They have a deal with Vissal Sika's company, uh, Finia, uh, Vinia, 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 I think it's called Vinia. Vissal Sika, yeah. uh, uh, Vianai? Vianai. Vianai. Vianai, okay, yeah. tough name to pronounce. But Boomi FinTalk is powered by that company. Exactly. So interesting application. Yeah, now this is an interesting area where Boomi will have to kind of mature out of its roots. I was asking some of the executives like, okay, our Boomi customers who have been all about integration, are they really dabbling in AI? Are they really the ones that are going to be looking into line of business areas? They're not finance people. Um, but I think this agent concept, uh, very compelling. Uh, if, if We're getting to uh, lots of conversations about having natural language interf interfaces and hiding the complexity. So if if they can get some line of business apps, their agent garden is going to have a lot of these third party agents uh, and they'll have to help do the selling and convincing of finance types, for example, that they have a really compelling AI driven experience for finance questions. And Boomi is there tapping the data, tapping the APIs, tapping the models and orchestrating all that behind the scenes to, to have a more of a natural language interaction for yeah. a process uh, a, a, and questions for finance types. So interesting, you mentioned you brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up. It's a great analysis, by the way. So uh, props to you on that. The next question question is this: As we observe the management team, we were talking before cameras. A lot of SAP, yeah, a lot of web services nerds. Okay, old school like plumbing, but also lines of business. Will the iPads boomy transition from a modernizing IT challenge? to line a business solution, and can they thread the needle? Yeah, or or is it, does it matter? Is, is, does it become one? Yeah, I mean, uh, that's going to be part of the challenge, educating their customers, reaching a higher level within their customer base, the CXO level. You know, they're even talking today, and I think you'll hear in today's keynote, that they can be like a low-code lang chain. Um, but can, can they convince, are, are they really, uh, is their customer of today really the, the <laughs> buyer of a Wang chain? They, they have to help bring together like the data engineering and data science people at their company yeah. and let them know, hey, yeah. we already have access to all this data. We already have access to the APIs. We can bring the models together too. So they do have an education yeah. and a maturation challenge ahead to up level the discussion within their customers to uh, get them to more of the transformational opportunities uh, they're seeing with AI. So Steve's got a big game going on here, starting a big game, they're executing, got a good management team. Uh, question for you is, is this a land grab for booming? Um, because, and, and if it is, it, there, it's a bold statement, you're alerting the competition. Yes. Okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to be the horizontally scalable data layer that manages independently all the different best of breed products for a mix and match composability architecture that ideally, I'm buying that product if I'm in the enterprise. So now, implementing it's a whole nother story. But you sell me that value proposition, I'm interested. Yeah. So it's kind of a land grab, that's my words. What do you think, is it a land grab? And, well, and what, I, the, I what, think, what can compete with them? Is it, you, you see this, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Steve Lucas saying some pretty ambitious, like out there visionary things and you see their team focused on the space they're in today and accelerating that and maybe moving into not just Gen AI and capabilities for integration and automation, but also helping companies to harness that to solve business problems. So I, I think, uh, you know, they're going to have to mature, but they're already signaling Synchrona. to competitors like an Informatica, hey, we're going deeper into, into data management, into ETL, into high-scale high data movement they're already signaling to competitors we're going, moving up, and obviously with acquisitions, putting some uh, 
you know, wood behind the arrow on stepping up on API management. Um, so they're already so, grabbing for more within the integration the automation space. Um, I think some of the partners where you might vision it as a, say it's a, a land grab, I think they're going to be at partners. They're going to be in that agent garden as partners. So you see the, you see the ecosystem really leveraging the agent garden option. Big yeah, time. I think that'll be a big partnership opportunity. Yesterday, I had some uh, conversations with analysts where, you know, you might see RPA players, you might see other, you know, process players in their in their garden um, among their partners. So, if Boomi continues to execute on this vision, whose lunch do they start eating? You mentioned some of the RPA players. Well, um, I think you're already seeing in the iPad space, that's the first cut. You're going to see some players fall away. You're going to see some consolidation. You've already seen some, you know, with, with uh, uh, Talon getting acquired last year. You know, these companies are in the integration space have to cover all the bases. That's the starting point. And that's, if they don't, if they're not uh, able to help companies harness Gen AI for integration needs and help them harness uh, Gen AI and other forms of AI for their business, you know, they're not going to be the one platform that companies choose. So that's the, the first cut. After that, I think, you know, we'll see where these agent possibilities <laughs> bring them. Yeah, we'll see how the, how the execution is. Final question for you is, um, as, as we look at Boomi, what's your analysis of um, what they should be working on? Where are their, uh, if you're the M&A advisory board, you're advising the CFO, you got to shore up these areas. What are, what are their to-do lists? If you had to give them a, a well, to-do list, well, I think they've already uh, done the API management to-do list. Uh, they're clearly working on that. They'll be integrating Mashery and Apita. Uh, I think on the data management side, they have some opportunities. They've talked about up in their game. Uh, there was a fellow on yesterday's uh, second half keynote who talked about this is all about data now. So they've really got to step up on the data management side. You are already see with their new uh, data hub yep. that they have that vision. I could easily see some uh, acquisitions of theirs. There's some you know, very cutting edge, cloud centric data integration players out there that uh, uh, could become part of their future. Awesome. Doug, great to have you on theCUBE. Um, give a quick plug on the research that you're working on. What's your main focus now? Obviously, uh, your area, but what, what are you digging into? Where, where, what are you uh, turning over in terms of research? T share what your, your focus well, is. Well, right very now. much uh, everything I talked about in iPads maturing into a more complete um, integration platform that's also enabling the next generation of AI. That's one part. Then moving up into uh, Analytical data platforms, you know, we're seeing the lake houses emerging. That's another uh, aspect of what I'm covering. You're seeing uh, <laughs> open standards emerge there and uh, everybody pretty much offering a lake house today. And then BI and analytics, obviously Gen AI is a, a kind of a yeah. enabler and a threat. Yeah. And we're seeing uh, all of those products uh, really evolve. Did you notice they used the word data reservoir on stage yesterday? <laughs> I asked them about that. They're like, we just want to use something. They're like, okay, I'm okay with that. Um, but <laughs> they're moving away from lake. Interesting kind of you know posture. Yeah, reservoir, lake. Uh, for yeah. me, it's a lake. I, you know, they can create a <laughs> reservoir that can become part of somebody's lake. I don't think they're going to become a, a, a lake house player, uh, but uh, they'll be part of the integration world for yeah. those analytical data platforms. Well, we're going to keep track on it. I really appreciate it. The runtime aspect certainly fascinating as things become more real time. The role of data will be key. Uh, you got a hot area. Yeah. Doug. Very hot area. Thanks for coming on. Okay, we'll be back more with Cube. We're the CEO coming on, Steve Lucas. Talking the big game, he's going to come on the Cube where all the big game talk happens. I'm John Furrier, the Cube. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>